morning, everyone. We're going to start Noonday Mass at, uh, on page 105 in the Book of Common Prayer. I invite you to stand and join me as you're able to. If you're not able to read along, <coughs> just uh, enjoy us joyfully. <laughs> Blessed be God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Here at our Lord Jesus Christ says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. We'll continue together with the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lesson. A reading from the book of James, beginning at the first verse, the first chapter, ninth verse. Let the believer who is lowly boast in being raised up, and the rich in being brought down. Because the rich will disappear like a flower in the field, for the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the field. Its flower falls and its beauty perishes. It is the same way with the rich in the midst of a busy life. They will wither away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You stand with me now and turn to the Book of Common Prayer to page 389 as we recite together Psalm 91. Book of Common Prayer, page 389, as we recite together Psalm 91. Whoever dwells under the defense of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I will trust. For he shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall defend you under his wings and you shall be safe under his feathers. His faithfulness and truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the sickness that destroys at noonday. A thousand shall fall beside you, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Indeed, with your eyes you shall behold and see the reward of the ungodly, because you have said, The Lord is my refuge, and have made the Most High your stronghold. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. They shall 
shall bear you in their hands, that you should put your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the serpent. You shall trample under your feet, because he has set his love upon you. Therefore, I will deliver him. I will lift him up, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will hear him. Indeed, I am with him in trouble. I will deliver him and bring him honor. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, Teacher, I have kept all these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loves him and said, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit. Come now as we consider your word for our lives. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Peter, it looks like the conversation we were having earlier <laughs> is just continuing here in our readings. On Saturday, uh, we did something unusual in my family. Um, we had a friend of mine over that I have known since I was nine. Um, when I was in third grade, I switched schools. I'd been going to a, a little Christian private school. And in third grade, I went to the local public school, Echo Park. And when I was there in third grade, I made one friend um, named Anthony. Um, and Anthony and I became really good friends. We were hanging out at each other's house, houses. Then we got in a fight in third grade, and we stopped talking to each other until sixth grade. And then from sixth grade on, we were just best friends. I mean, we're talking like stay at each other's house every night, um, grow up together. When I started dating and he started dating, we would take each other out, you know, with the, these girls. And, and then we'd come back and sort of, you know, and, and, and sort of do a little recon. Like, how did that go for you? Anyway, um, Anthony and I were really good friends um, all throughout high school. And... Um, when we were in high school, we were on the swim team together, and we befriended someone else who just joined in with our group, and we were just really, really close. And after, I think, three years of hanging out together on a very regular basis, um, Anthony pointed out to me that our third friend never invited us to come over to his house. And I was, and I thought, oh, you know, like I didn't, I was always been talking like this, you know, so like, oh, I didn't notice. And so we went and talked to our buddy about this um, and come to find out that he was really ashamed of his house and his family compared to my house and my family and Anthony's house and his family. And, I, and I'm, you know, and I said, what do you mean? You know, your mom is great, and your your sister and your brother are awesome, and we love them. And his, his dad's wonderful too. And he said, "Report." 
all, it, it like it hit me in the face. I grew up in this family uh, where we always had everything I'd ever wanted. We always had the newest computer and the newest play, you know, uh, Xbox game or, you know, whatever. whatever. And, and, and I never thought anything of it. I always had all the clothes I ever needed. I don't think we ever had hand-me-downs. You know, my, my mom went to Kohl's. And we would talk about people who lived in our neighborhood as people who had really, really nice cars and really, really nice stuff, and that they were sort of snobby sometimes. But I never sort of thought that people would feel weird inviting me over to their house because they didn't have those things until right there, the very end of my high school career. And it was one of these moments, as I sort of then began walking through life, I realized that my understanding of who I was and what I had was vastly different of, from my friends. And then later, through other people who did not have access to the same resources that I had. My mom and my dad both grew up in very humble families. Um, my dad's dad was a pilot before being a pilot was lucrative and cool. My mom's dad was a chemist, a, a, a chemistry teacher at a local Louisiana, New Orleans high school. You know, so we're not talking real hefty money. And so because of that, my folks just had a different mentality around making money, but also not using money as a status symbol over other people. Now, I realized uh, as I became an adult, this was a regular way that I've discovered that we find ways of evaluating success and failure. Some people's worth or some people's lack of worth in the world. And so one of the things I want to lift up to you is, is both here in this writing from James and this writing from Mark, we have some really important ways to assess money, especially when it comes to the two great commandments that we just heard Jesus say, right? Love the Lord your God, love your neighbors yourself. I don't want to talk about these because it really harkens to the conversation that we've been having. And I think that the Lord is trying to teach us as a community. Let's work our way backwards. People's value is not in the amount of money that they make. Now, of course, as soon as I say that, we go, well, of course, right? Um, but I think this is actually one of the things that we can we have a very difficult time understanding within a culture like ours where we are so deeply removed from the consequences of our work. Okay, let me, let me tell a story. Um, my uh, stepdad never knew his grandfather. Jim, my, grandfather uh, my stepdad Jim never knew his grandfather because his dad had a, a dad who just walked out on him and he never met him. He never knew him his whole life. And so my, my uh, step-grandfather, Jerry, 93 years old, still goes on his roof and fixes the shingles. He's one of those guys, right? You could, he, he'll, he eats bacon for breakfast every morning and his cholesterol is, you know, perfect. Blood pressure lower than mine. And, and so Jerry grew up by going to the, the local hardware store and every single day, he'd walk into the hardware store, learn about the tools, and he got to know the owner. And the owner functionally raised him. So that owner taught him about how to fix things, what it meant to be a man when you have issues. And so Jerry eventually ended up taking over the hardware store. And whenever Jerry would do business at the hardware store, he would always ask people to compensate him based on what his needs were and what their needs, and what their needs were. And he kept doing this up until, I think it was the 1970s, 1980s, when there was a bunch of Ace Hardwares that were growing up in the area. And they eventually um, made Jerry an offer to buy out the store. And he goes, how do you guys have so much money? And they said, well, you know, we just follow the market. We, <laughs> you know, we sell products at a price that we can make some money off of, and then we use that money to grow the store. And he says, well, why would you set prices like that? Why not set prices based on what people need and what you need in order to survive? And I think that way of thinking is totally shifted within our call. Some of this money, some of it is the nature of, 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 of capitalism, not an insult to capitalism, but, you know, that sometimes we put more value in what we get out of a product than we necessarily put into how it's affecting other people that we charge what we charge. 
And I want to say this based on our own cultural understanding and reality, that the purpose of our work and the purpose of our money are all tools so that we can live in peaceful community, worshiping God. Now, notice what's not there. Um, our jobs are not about what are my best interests. Our jobs are not about making sure I have the best overall effect on society as possible. No, our, our, our vocations in life are simply to work and serve within the local community so that we can honor God together. That's it. Okay? Now, you'll notice that if that is the process, if that's the package, that ultimately every single person is crucial in the cog of society. The shoemakers are just as valuable and essential as the mayors. And the mayors are just as valuable and, and, and essential as the blacksmiths and so on and so forth. And I want to say this to us about the way that it seems to me that this goes awry is because all of a sudden, our desire to collect and gather possessions, it becomes more than just an idea outside of us. It becomes the very nature of our very selves. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, you lack one thing, go sell what you own, give the money to the poor, you will have a treasure in heaven, then come follow me. Now, just think about it for a sec. The creator of the universe, who's taken on flesh in the, in the person of Jesus, has given this man this injunction, and it's within the guise of this one conversation, how do I inherit eternal life? Okay? We talked about some Bible study a few weeks ago, right? Is this a command for every human being everywhere? No. It's specifically an injunction that Jesus lodges against this particular man because he looks at him, loves him, and says, I see you. You lack one thing. And I wonder about this for us. What are the ways in which we put the idea of possession or class or um or, or people's value in the way of us holding on to who God has called us to be. Love your neighbor as yourself. I think that for some of us, that becomes the very stumbling block that limits the gospel from having access to us. Having access to others. Because we put these arbitrary blindfolds over our eyes that don't allow us to see people for who actually they are, the image of God. Now, this has another application to it also. I think that the boundaries that we have between us and others is one thing. But I think it actually goes deeper to the very core of what it means to be a worshiping person, a person who invests their time and their energy into focusing on worship. And to me, I just abstract the, the problem. I think that this is the issue for good Sam, right? I think that worship is something that we are very confused about, okay? Worship has a very reasonable and logical cause and effect. You read the scriptures, right? Worship is, I put my energy and my time and my money and my value into God, okay? The effect is I understand and receive energy and time and money and value. You see, that Jesus says in the scriptures, he goes, unless you forsake father, mother, sister, brother, for me and for the kingdom of God, you will, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. But what does he say? And not one single person who forsakes father, mother, sister, brother will not receive a hundredfold father, mother, sisters, brothers in the kingdom of God. What's the idea? Okay. It's not a health and wealth gospel. It's a, when you give to God, you see finally who you are in him. Your, your creaturely identity as image of God all of a sudden shifts. Let me say it in a different way. When you worship, God gives you the energy to live, to exist, to perceive life in all the creaturely ways that he intended us to experience it. I wonder how this passage is hitting us today. I wonder how the Lord is calling us to maybe new repentance, new thinking. I wonder what it means for us to lift, lift our lives, live our lives in a way in which we who are rich are brought low, and in which we lift up the lowly so that God can be glorified. 
And I think that the warning is stark and the blessing is stark. Quote James. In the midst of a busy life, we will wither away if we are continuing to lift ourselves up. But if we are willing to humble ourselves and lift up our brothers and sisters in Christ, God will be the one to lift us up and bring us to the heavenly place where there is no more hunger or sighing or crying, but life everlasting. Amen. Please stand with me now. Turn to page 112, 110. As we pray for the church and for the world. Almighty and ever-living God, we are taught by your holy word to offer prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all people. We humbly ask you mercifully to receive our prayers. Inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all who confess your holy name may agree in the truth of your holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy. We pray that you will lead the nations of the world in the way of righteousness, and so guide and direct their leaders, especially Joseph, our president, Brian, our governor, the Congress and courts of these United States, that your people may enjoy the blessing of freedom and peace. Grant that our leaders may impartially administer justice, uphold integrity and truth, restrain wickedness and vice, and protect true religion and virtue. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. give grace, Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to your servants, fully our Archbishop, Frank, our Bishop, that by their life and teaching, they may proclaim your true and life-giving word and rightly and duly administer your holy sacraments. And to all your people, give your heavenly grace, especially to this congregation, that with reverent and obedient hearts we may hear and receive your holy word and serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of our lives. Lord, in your mercy, prosper, we pray. All those who proclaim the gospel of your kingdom throughout the world and strengthen us to fulfill your great commission, making disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to obey all that you have commanded. Lord, in your mercy, your prayer. We ask you in your goodness, O Lord, to comfort and sustain all who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We lift up to you, Lord, those who are sick in this parish. Lord, in your mercy, we remember before you all your servants who have departed this life in your faith and fear. We lift up to you especially Ted Brown, other others.
that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we ask you to give us grace to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and all your saints, that we may share with them in your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you now to kneel with me as we humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker and judge of us all, we acknowledge and lament our many sins and defenses, which we have committed by thought, word, and deed, against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your righteous anger against us. We are deeply sorry for these our transgressions. The burden of them is more than we can bear. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that has passed, and grant that we may evermore serve and please you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Through the word of God to all who truly turn to him. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. You may stand. My sisters, my brothers, the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you, with your spirit. Let's greet one another in the name of our Lord Jesus. Tomorrow is the feast of the Confession of St. Peter, and so we're going to gather together at 6 p.m. to say the Mass, and then afterward we're going to have time of snacks and joy and get some time to just hang out, do the whole feasting thing like Jesus intended it for us to do. So I invite you to come join us tomorrow at 6 p.m. In addition to that, not this Sunday, the 21st, but next Sunday, the 28th, Bishop Frank is going to come visit, do his annual Episcopal visit. So I invite you to come um, and, uh, yeah, bring, bring anything you want blessed. So we'll be super blessed by the bishop. Any other announcements for the good of our gathering? Okay. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
course continues on page 116. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head above all. All things come from you, O Lord. And of your own have we given you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal His glory, that He might bring us out of darkness and into His own glorious light. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. All praise and glory is yours, O God, our Heavenly Father. For in your tender mercy, you gave your only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there by his one oblation of himself, once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world. And he instituted and in his holy gospel commanded us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. So now, O merciful Father, in your great goodness, we ask you to bless and sanctify with your word and Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. For on the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ stood bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for Therefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of your dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, your humble servants, celebrate and make here before your divine majesty, if these holy gifts, the memorial your Son commanded us to make, remembering his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and his promise to come again. And we earnestly desire your fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, asking you to grant that by the merits and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and your whole church may obtain forgiveness of our sins. 
friends and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present to you, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice. We humbly pray that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with your grace and heavenly benediction, and be made one body with him that he may dwell in us, and we in him. And although we are unworthy because of our many sins to offer you any sacrifice, yet we ask you to accept this duty and service we owe, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ, our Lord. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Hallelujah! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah! Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith. Thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Amen.
almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us through this sacrament of your favor and goodness towards us that we are true members of the mystical body of your Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of your everlasting kingdom. And we humbly ask you, Heavenly Father, to assist us with your grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all the good works that you have prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.